Church family, this week we're going to cover chapter 3 of Jarvis Williams' uh, book, One New Man. Uh, we're going to talk about the solution for our sin and the solution for the issue of racism, for racial tension, and unintentional um, acts of bias. That the solution we're going to learn is, in fact, the death of Jesus Christ. Sin separates us from one another, and it separates us from God. And what brings us back to God is Christ. And Christ, his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead, allows us to be once again reconciled with one another. So this week, I want you to pick one of these passages, and I want you to explain in detail how Jesus is the solution to our sin problem. So take one of these passages and explain it in depth. And I also want you to be asking the question, how does racism and unintentional biases, how do these sins undermine the gospel and the character of God? When we look at Romans 3, we see that it undermines the gospel because Paul in Romans 3 makes it clear that no one is righteous. Jews and Gentiles are both unrighteous. No one seeks for God. Neither Jew nor Gentiles on our own seek God. There is no distinction, it says in Romans 3. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what racism does is it really <laughs> makes distinctions between people on the basis of race. So you see that these acts actually undermine the gospel because at the foundation of the gospel, we learn that there is no distinction. This also undermines the foundation of the gospel because Christ is the solution for sin. So if they we're making distinctions between races, and that's what racism does, then really we're undermining the sacrifice of Christ. And notice we're also undermining the character of God because Romans 3 says, and the cross demonstrates the righteousness of God. Intentional acts of racism undermine the gospel. They undermine the reality that there is no distinction between humans on the basis of sin. Racism undermines the character of God. His righteousness in putting forth Jesus as a sacrifice for all sinners. So church family, as we, as we learn about how Christ is the solution for our sin, and as we apply this to the issue of racism and unintentional biases, I am praying that we would embrace the gospel more deeply and live out the reality that we are all equal, all People who trust in Jesus experience a unity amid a God-glorifying diversity. I'm praying that we had learned that better this week, church family. I'm looking forward to discussing chapter 3 with you on Sunday evening.